So our, our theme this year for the seniors is unashamed, and I'm going to rock this because I've got about five minutes, all right? So uh, I want to share something with you real quick. You know, I, like you, have flaws, right? And uh, I have a physical flaw that you may not be aware of. I wasn't even aware of it until uh, about two years ago. So my wife, uh, she had gotten braces, and she had basically said, the orthodontist said that uh, there is something with your bite that they call an occlusion. And basically your bite, you have that slide for me, Jay? Any slides? Oh, there we go. So your bite, basically your the upper, the top teeth, the middle line of your top teeth should line up with your upper lip and with your nose. And then the midline of your bottom teeth should line up with the midline of your top teeth. I had never noticed this before, but after she had shared this with me, I'm good on the top teeth, but there's a slight occlusion with my bottom teeth, right? So we, we talk about unashamed, and I think sometimes we live in an era today where we're ashamed about things that we shouldn't be. You know, I want people to see that I've got, you know, my teeth is, uh, my, I got a mid-shift. We're unashamed of things we shouldn't be, and we're not ashamed of things that we should be. And so when we think about unashamed, I want you to kind of keep this in mind uh, as we move through some of these verses. So here's a passage, and this is from the Apostle Paul. And unashamed basically comes from Romans chapter 1. We're going to look at another letter of the Apostle Paul's Ephesians 317b through 4 when. I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people. Now, I love this verse. To grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout our gen all generations forever and ever. Amen. As a prisoner for the Lord then, and he's referring back to everything that he just said, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Now, I love the verses that talk about how high and wide and deep and long the love of God is. And I love the fact that the power of God can do immeasurably more than anything that I can imagine. But you think about it, he finishes this. There's no chapter division. He goes right into the next verse. He says, live a life worthy of the calling you have received. And then Paul spends the remainder of the letter of Ephesians telling us exactly how to do that. How do I live a life worthy of the calling? I want to go over to another letter of his in Colossians chapter 1, in which he says, He is the one we proclaim. I'm unashamed. Admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone fully mature to Christ. Now this verse right here, I was telling a colleague of mine recently, when I sign my emails, I sign 27, Psalm 2713. Uh, and basically that says, I am confident that I will see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. I'm not ashamed of that verse. But I will tell you, this verse right here, this last verse, where Paul says this, To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. I told my colleague, I'm too much of a wimp spiritually to sign my letters like that. Think about this. This word contend that he uses, I want to highlight that word. I would love to be able to say with Paul that I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. When you look at this word contend, in the original Greek, it's the Greek word agonizomai. And this word is amazing, So, because what Paul does with this, the definition is to contend for a prize, or to struggle, and the way that it's used throughout Scripture, uh, and in uh, the first century, I am struggling, striving, as in an athletic contest, or warfare. I contend as within an adversary. So he takes this word that's generally used for wrestling, and boxing, and battle, and he places it on the gospel. Like, I'm supposed to be someone that contends, and is unashamed for the gospel. And yet we get ashamed of physical flaws. And we're ashamed of what people might think of us. And he says that we should not. Agonizomai. It comes from a root, agon. And it's a masculine noun. 
and the English teachers will love this. And it's the root of the English words agony or agonize. It's a grueling conflict. We've got to keep that in mind. Like if you sit here today, we have so many people in our country, they want to be unashamed of so many different things. And I go back to what I said before. I think we live in a culture today where we're not ashamed of the things that we should be, and we're ashamed of the things that we shouldn't. I should not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I should not be ashamed of bringing up Christ in conversation with people that I meet, with my family members, with my friends. And this is so powerful. I never realized this before. But this next slide, Paul uses this word contend, agonizomai, in 1 Timothy 6.12. He says this to Timothy, fight, that's the word contend, fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. When you, when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And then he says in 2 Timothy 4.7, and this is what I'll finish with. He uses this same word. I have fought. He's using that word contend. Agonizomai. I, I have agonized. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And I would ask you seniors this question. Will you be able to, at the end of your life, be able to say, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Will you be able to say, I am unashamed? Thank you, Mr. Island. That was actually beautiful. Good job. But um, something way cooler happened yesterday. I don't know if you guys know. Mr. Highland beat Dylan Stowers in an arm wrestling match. <laughs> it looked like he was losing in the video, but hey, he popped it right back up at the end. I don't know. But um, unashamed, what does it mean? Unashamed, there's a lot of different ways to look at it, but to me, the most important way to look at it, like Mr. Highland said, is we should be unashamed of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for our sins, that's all that matters, and we should be unashamed about that. And honestly, I thought I was gonna be nervous when I came up here. Obviously, I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm not really, because there's a common bond between our grade. <laughs> um, literally, I love everyone in here. I don't have like, I don't have anything bad against anybody else in here. I love everyone in here. Everyone in here is my boy. Um, I just want to thank our grade. I want to thank LCA. Our staff is amazing. Our grade is amazing. Um, so many names. I literally could not name how many special teachers are in this building, students. 